Hello my dear friends and welcome to my channel. Don't forget to make yourself a cup of tea and snacks if you like, because today we have very interesting stories, and one of them is a story about a woman who pushed a kid off the bridge cause he didn't set a good example for her daughter. Please subscribe if you haven't and I hope you'll enjoy it. My brother's wedding was two years ago, but this still pisses me off every time it comes to mind. My grandmother is rather histrionic, if she isn't the center of attention, she will make herself the center of attention. So it was my brother's wedding and I was his best man. I have a tiny car and needed to be at the wedding venue early, and my grandma was going to be picked up by my parents later, she wasn't anywhere near ready and I needed to leave, so I assumed all was well at this point. We set everything up at the venue and took photos and got ready for the ceremony, and finally my parents arrived with my grandma in tow. She was already pissed and causing a scene because I had abandoned her when I left for the venue. We managed to calm her down, but I could see my brother was already getting disappointed with the situation, he just wanted everything to go right, and he is too nice to say anything to our grandma. Things went okay for a while, until we were seating her in the chapel, and she wasn't getting to sit with my mom and dad at the very front where the parents of the bride and groom had the place of honor. Once more she made a big scene until she was moved to the front next to my parents, my brother was red with embarrassment, as everyone from both families had pretty much filed into the chapel. Once more, things calmed back down once she had her way. The last straw was at the reception, everyone was eating and having a good time, I was going around checking on the tables to make sure everything was going well, and people were being taken care of, and then I get to my grandma's table. I don't remember exactly what she said as I kind of lost it at that point, and it was two years ago, but it was something like, why is this taking so long, if they aren't going to get the reception moving along, I need you to take me home, I replied with something like, I still have to give the best man speech in a while, and you aren't going to be asking mom and dad to take you back. Then she said the words, she said this to me growing up any time I said anything about school or something I had learned or disagreed about, and it basically instantly triggers me, don't you get smart with me you little crap. I saw her Ed and I said something to get her to come outside the venue, then I got vicious, I didn't yell because I didn't want to draw attention to the situation, but anyone within line of sight would easily know I was freaking pissed. I told her something along the lines of, you need to sit down and shut the hell up, this is my brother's wedding, he still believes you are this amazing person that he wants in his life. But I've seen through to the vile which you are for years now. You mistreat and abuse my mom, and you are trying to do the same crap to my brother now. Your crap will never fly with me, I know what you are, and if you don't get back in there and pretend that you are having a great time you will have nothing to do with my life. She got old pissy and how dare you talk to your elders like that. I handed her the keys to my car and told her she could leave if she absolutely couldn't stand the reception, but if she did, she would never be invited to be a part of anything in my life, not my wedding, not my graduation, not even to see any grandchildren I may have in the future, you will be lucky if you see me again before you die. Apparently she either didn't care or thought I was bluffing because she left. I haven't seen her since, my choice, she complains to my mom that I don't talk to her. I specifically sent her what looked like an invitation that told her that she wasn't invited to my wedding. Then she wasn't invited to my graduation, and after learning about the comments she made about me, Caucasian, and my Asian wife, and how it was good we hadn't had any children yet because, the world doesn't need any more Asian babies. I freaking hate her guts, I'd like to say some part of me still loves her, but after everything I can't stand even the thought of her. If there was any chance I could forgive her for how she tried to ruin my brother's wedding, her crap pretty much solidified my determination that she would never meet her grandchildren, and that I'm not even sure I would be willing to visit her on her deathbed. I don't know if I overreacted or if I'm a bad person for responding like this, but I watched for 18 years as she emotionally abused my mom over and over again, and my dad by proxy. She had always doted on me and my brother, but when she acted like that at my brother's wedding, all of that came boiling to the surface, and I tore into her. You didn't overreact. You reacted perfectly. The old witch needed to hear the truth. Also, I'm glad you did so that she couldn't make more of a scene. Hopefully, your brother will never have to know the truth. I have a skin condition called eczema, it is where the skin gets too dry and sometimes swells up depending on what I eat and depending on the weather. My GF is fine with my skin condition, as long the rash is not too severe. Cast. Me. Find out yourself. GF. Girlfriend. 
EP, entitled Parent, NK, Nice Kid, ND, Nice Dad. It was my birthday at the time and I was hanging out with my family and my GF on a sunny day and my parents decided to invite some friends over for the day. I see my best friend, ND and EP I met EP a few times, but she hated why I have eczema during a conversation. Note that my skin was very sore and very red, so I stayed inside to avoid my skin from being too hot. I told my GF that I was gonna stay inside and she was fine with that, and she gave my company. When my family friends were over at my place I was worried that EP might do something about my skin condition, since her husband is a doctor, she tried to pour boiling hot water on my skin. So I went to see if ND was there, but then EP and NK appeared. I questioned where was ND, and EP said that ND had some last minute stuff to do. I head outside with EP and NK, NK, 13 years old, played with my little bro, 12 years old, and EK asked me why I didn't want to go out. I gave her a valid reason and still wanted me to go outside. I went out for around 10 or 15 min, then went back in to get some stuff for NK. This is where things get serious. I call my GF to help me with the stuff for NK, and told EP told her if she wants to help she is welcome to, EP said that she needed a break because her arms were tired, and I allowed it. I was wrong. A few minutes after I took a break cause my skin started to hurt a little from stretching my arms, then EP goes downstairs into the mudroom and grabs a bottle. I thought she has gotten a bottle of water, but EP happens to grab a bottle of bleach. EP comes upstairs, opens the bottle and purposely pours the bleach on my skin, where there were small openings in my skin, and where it was red. I was in so much pain that I started to sob. What the hell was that for? He's in so much pain. Oh I thought it would make him better. What made you think of pouring bleach on his skin? Would make him feel better? His skin is burning at this point me and my GF were pissed. My GF drove me to the hospital and took me to the ER. After being checked up by the doctor my GF called my parents and called the cops too. Once my parents arrived EP, NK and ND arrived too. ND works at the hospital. EP told the cops that she happened to pick up the wrong bottle and accidentally poured it on me. At this point I wanted to beat the living crap out of her. Me and my GF told the cops everything that happened and I said I would like to press charges. ND arrives with his co-worker and happens to see his wife cuffed up. He questioned why she was cuffed up and I told the whole story. ND gave me prescription cream to treat my wounds and he told my GF to look after me which was nice. I press charges and I have a court date in the next week or so. I hope EP serves more than a year in jail. If you're wondering, my arm still hurt a bit but still recovering and still treating myself with the cream. Wow, I'm so sorry. I've never had bleach burns before, and I can't even imagine how bad they would be on more sensitive skin. I don't know what the hell is wrong with people. I've definitely lived a crazy life with some crazy friends and enemies, and have had my fair share of idiots. I live in a medium-sized city or town, about 40k people, and much of the area is rural. I was about 9 at the time of the Great Shove. There's a bridge that connects two very popular hiking trails that runs over a wide river. Despite its length and width, the river is only about 15 feet deep at its deepest point. Anyway, the trail is always packed in early summer to late fall, since the bridge is the only way to access the other trail, without taking a swim in the river. My dad, my brother and I were crossing the bridge to get to the other trail, when my dad requested that we stop and take some photos of the mountain view we had. My brother, about 7 at the time, small and skinny, was doing that kid thing where they hoist themselves above a railing with their hands, but stay in that position. He was enjoying the views when this absolute whale of a woman, and I mean an absolute large, maybe 380 to 430 pounds, came run waddling up to us. She didn't have a senior manager haircut, but her head was shaved, and the stubble of her hair was dyed red. She had one of those baby carriers that you strap to your chest with an infant in it. This EM stopped right behind my brother, uttered you're not setting a good example for my daughter, and promptly yoed him off the bridge. In retrospect, she probably just kind of eased him off, but my memory was a bit hazy from that part. Naturally, my dad, me, and everyone else crossing the bridge were in shock. I saw someone immediately dial 911, and my dad began yelling at her. I was just bawling and looking over the edge, where I saw my brother had surfaced. The drop was about 25 feet, but there's no way he landed on his feet after he tumbled off. 
A bunch of people started yelling at him to swim to the shore, but I could see that he was too busy screaming and crying to listen to what they were saying. I turned back to my dad and saw that the lady was matching his level of anger and shouting as loud as he was. All I could hear from the EM were things like I didn't want your son to be a bad influence for my daughter, what if she tried to do something like that? I don't care about your freaking daughter, why the hell did you just push my son off a bridge? A squad car pulled up after about 10 minutes, the trail was wide. My dad had dashed off to try to find my brother, and a bunch of hikers were yelling at the EM to try and prevent her from running, I should probably say waddling, away from the scene. The baby was somehow completely calm this whole time. The cops hop out of the car and stride over to the EM, they must have had Karen senses. One of them opens their mouth to say something, and the EM turns around and tackles the officer, scratching at his face and screaming like a banshee. The other cop and several other hikers immediately try to pull her off, not because she was attacking the cop, but because she had practically belly flopped onto him with a freaking baby on her chest. As soon as they get her off she starts running at the cop again. The strap that held the baby must have broken because someone had scooped her up so that the cops could take action. The second cop immediately draws her gun and puts a bullet through her shoulder. After shrieking so loudly that I thought I was going to go deaf, the whale passed out and the cops took her to an ambulance that was waiting by the squad car. The baby was crying and a paramedic took her from him and carried her away. I was still crying and kept on sobbing until my dad appeared with my soaking wet brother about 25 minutes later. The cops ask us a crap ton of questions. I had to answer most of them since my dad had left to find my brother and I was only 9. That slowed things down a bit. My brother was fine but totally shaken. He got diagnosed with PTSD 6 months later. We went home and slowly began to recover. Two weeks later we get a letter from the police department saying that the lady had serious undiagnosed mental health issues and most likely saw my brother as a threat to her child rather than her story of him being a bad influence. Despite the surprising results I still hate her for what she did to my sweet little bro and will never forgive her. This was back in early 2013. She's still serving her seven-year prison sentence for attempted manslaughter, child endangerment, and assault. I also heard she was in rehabilitation sessions, so I hope she can come to her senses. Thanks for sticking by me for the whole story, folks. She definitely lost her child. Thank God she got arrested for what she did. I fear what might have happened to the child if she didn't. Could have been much worse. My eldest sister is a flight attendant and has a lot of entitled stories that I will be sharing. This is one of my personal favorites that my sister tells at every holiday dinner. My sister was working a flight from a London airport to Geneva or Benidorm, can't remember and honestly isn't important. It was a midday flight and would get to its destination before nightfall, so it was a simple routine flight to a typical British holiday location. Everyone had sat down and my sister was stood in the middle of the plane, being one of two or three of the flight attendants doing the safety features. Whilst they'd all turned their backs to grab the yellow life vests from the overhead bins to demonstrate, a sneaky kid must have left his seat at the back of the plane to sit in the flight attendant seats that are kind of like the seats in the sign world, folds up when no one is sat in them. At this moment in time, the plane is not moving because there's a slight delay to the order of the runway and the plane had to wait. She finished the safety features and is checking that everyone has their seat belts on when her colleague calls her to the back of the plane. It's a plane with two seats on either side of the plane, so it's a fairly small plane. A woman is laying in her chair on one of the back rows, her seat reclining and the chair next to her empty. My sister's colleague, OFA. Other flight attendant is gently tapping the woman to get her to put her seat in the upright position for takeoff, and my sister is confused about the empty seat, considering she was also at the boarding desk and boarded a full flight. EM jolts up, obviously fake, and pulls off her eye mask, doing one of those overdramatic yawns which my sister acts perfectly. Sorry miss, but in order for the plane to take off, your seat needs to be upright. The woman looks in white and nods and sorts out her seat. That's it right. Nope. OFA goes first to the back of the plane and jumps back in fright. S, my sister, goes after her, wondering what the issue is. Lying across two of those flight attendant seat right at the back of the plane is EK, looking up, playing on his tablet. Tries to get her breath back. Sorry little dude, but you can't sit there and you need to go back to your seat so we can get going. Mummy said I could lie down here. Sorry little man, but no can do. Can you go to your mum? Mum. 
what seems to be the issue. These seats are for flight attendants only, and your son is taking them up. Take him back to his seat. At this rate, OFA is reaching for wrist eyes because flight attendants have training in tying up passengers in them, not EK, EM. There is no problem with my child wanting to sleep. It is an inconvenience for me when my child leans on me to sleep so I told him he could sleep back there. He can't sleep here. Get back to your seats or you will be escorted off the plane. No. You should go out of your way to make the passenger comfortable so my son will not be moving anywhere. She swings side to side even though the plane is not moving. Miss are you drunk? How dare you accuse me of such a thing? This is outrageous and I will be complaining to your boss. She's slurring and my sister can barely understand. She takes a few steps towards my sister, glaring and raises her hand. OFA steps in, grabs both of EM's hands and locks them into zip ties, whilst S calls the captain at the front to tell them what happened and that they are going to need to offload two passengers. Thankfully they only had hand luggage and cabin luggage, and they didn't need to dig through luggage in the aircraft hold. Whilst waiting for police to arrive, EM screams bloody murder, whilst little smuggy K refuses to get off the seats. Eventually a police officer bribes him with a Snickers bar, and he walks off the plane behind his mum. At this point the flight has been delayed for a little less than an hour. The pilots are pissed, and most of the passengers are loud and angry. My sister said it was her favorite, sarcastic, flight to work. I don't get it. If you can handcuff an adult and drag them off a plane, you can do the same to a kid. Shame on the cop for bribing the kid. He literally just taught the kid that you can make cops do what you want. Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video please consider subscribing, and if you missed the last episode on the channel I'm gonna link it right here, the story is about a woman who made a scene because she didn't like a woman feeding her child. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.